Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Point Break, 2015 film. Point Break is a 2015 action thriller film directed by Erickson Core and written by Kurt Wimmer, which he co produced with John Baldicke, Broderick Johnson, Andrew A. Kosov, Christopher Taylor, and David Valdez. An American German Chinese co production. This film is a remake of the 1991 film of the same name. The film stars Edgar Ramirez, Luke Bracey, Teresa Palmer, Delroy Lindo, and Ray Winston, and was released in China on December 4, 2015 by China Film Group and in the United States on December 25, 2015 by Warner Brothers in 3D and Real 3D. The film received negative reviews from critics, and grossed $133 million from a $105 million budget. Plot Extreme sport athlete Johnny Utah, and his friend Jeff, are traversing a steep ridge line on motorbikes. The run ends with a jump onto a lone stone column, where Jeff overshoots the landing and falls to his death. Seven years later, Utah is an FBI agent candidate. He attends a briefing on a skyscraper heist, in which the criminals steal diamonds, escaping by parachute, in Mumbai. A similar heist happens over Mexico where the criminals unload millions of dollars in bills over Mexico, then disappear into the Cave of Swallows. Utah's research concludes that they were done by the same men, who are attempting to complete the Ozark 8, a list of eight extreme ordeals to honor the forces of nature. They have already completed three, and Utah predicts they'll attempt the fourth on a rare sea wave phenomenon in France. After presenting his analysis, Utah is sent undercover to France under a field agent named Poppers. They reach France and Utah gets help from others to surf the tall tube wave. As he goes in, there is already another surfer riding the wave, leaving Utah unstable. Utah gets sucked into the wave and faints, but the other surfer bails and rescues Utah. He wakes aboard a yacht with the surfer, Body, and his team Roach, Chowder, and Gromit. They leave him to enjoy the party, and he gets acquainted with a girl, Samsara. The next day, Utah finds the men in an abandoned Paris train station after he overhears them talking about the location. Body gives him an initiation fight, and soon he is accepted into the circle. They travel to the Alps for the next ordeal, wingsuit flying through the cliffs, the life of wind. The four succeed in their attempt and spend some time together with Samsara. The next day, they climb the snow peaks for the sixth ordeal, snowboarding down a steep mountain of snow. They reach their spot, but Utah decides to extend his line, so the others follow him. Chowder's lips, and falls to his death, and Utah becomes depressed about it. After a party, Samsara explains that she and Body both knew Ono Ozaki. When they were young, that her parents died in an avalanche accident and Ozaki gave her a home after. She explains further that Ozaki actually completed his third ordeal, despite what was widely believed. He did not die attempting the ordeal, but was actually killed by a whaling ship crashing into his boat while he was trying to save humpback whales. On his boat, a young boy, Body, decided not to tell the truth of his story, but to finish what Ozaki started. Next they travel to a gold mine, where Body detonates explosives Gromit and Roach planted. After blowing his cover, Utah chases Body, managing to trip his bike. Body escapes, because Utah cannot stand up after the crash. The FBI freezes Body's sponsor's assets. Body plans to rob a nearby Italian bank on a mountain top. Utah and the police intercept the group, resulting in a crossfire that kills Roach. As the group flees, Utah chases and shoots one of them to death, who is revealed to be Samsara and not Body. Utah finds the location of the next ordeal, solo rock climbing, with no safety beside Angel Falls in Venezuela. He finds Body and Gromit and chases them on a climb, but Gromit falters, falling to his death. Utah catches up to Body, but he falls backward down the waterfall, completing what would have been the last ordeal. Body has to redo the fourth ordeal, because he bailed out on the wave when he chose to save Johnny. Seventeen months later, Utah finds him in the Pacific facing another giant wave. As Utah tries to get Body to come back with him and pay for his crimes, he eventually lets Body attempt to surf it, both knowing that he will not come back. The wave engulfs Body, and Utah continues his career in the FBI and begins going through his own eight ordeals.
Cast Colon an eco-warrior who plays a sort of Robin Hood role, an FBI agent and former extreme motocross star and a surfer turned into an extreme athlete. Unlike the original film, Utah is not an ex-football player. Development Point Break is an American-German-Chinese co-production. Studio Babelsberg co-produced and oversaw production services for the film. A script for the remake had been lying around for years, but it was not until Ericsson Corp pitched his idea to Warner Brothers that the film actually got off the ground. However, Corps' idea for the film was significantly different than the script. His concept was much more of a big tentpole movie, with scenes that defy the laws of physics. In 2011, it was announced that a remake of Point Break was being developed by Alcon Entertainment and Warner Brothers. The screenplay was being written by Kurt Wimmer, screenwriter of the 2012 Total Recall remake. Wimmer co-produced with brother Rucker Johnson, Andrew Kosov, John Baldicki, and Chris Taylor. Ericsson Kaur, cinematographer of The Fast and the Furious, directed. The film received funds of 3.6 million euros from the German Federal Film Fund. Casting Luke Bracey portrayed the role previously played by Keanu Reeves. Ray Winston took on the role played by Gary Busey and the original. Gerard Butler was initially in negotiations to play Body, the role Patrick Swayze created, but negotiations fell through. By mid-May 2014, Edgar Ramirez was in talks to play Body, and was later cast. Filming and Stunts Principal photography commenced on June 26, 2014 in Berlin. Shortly before production began in Berlin, Kaur got the cast and crew together to watch the original Point Break. The new team did not reach out to the original cast and crew. Bracey did not talk to Reeves, and Kaur did not reach out to director Catherine Bigelow, though Ramirez did seek and receive the director's blessing. Shooting took place in a total of 11 countries across four continents using actual extreme sports stars and stuntmen. Locations include Berlin slash Germany, Hall and Tyrol, Lenz and Corinthia slash Austria, Italy, Switzerland, Hawaii, Tahiti, Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Venezuela, France, India, and the United Kingdom. While the original film focused on just a few sports primarily surfing and used cranes, and other Hollywood trickery to portray them, the new movie eschewed all of that including green screens, and relied on real-life practical stunts. For the numerous stunts performed in the film, Kaur gathered a group of the best snowboarders, free rock climbers, big wave surfers, high-speed motocross riders and wingsuit pilots in the world and filmed them, essentially, as actors. Surf Sequence Since surfing was central to the first movie, the filmmakers wanted to include it again, but at a higher level. Kaur and his team looked all over the world to try to find out where waves were going to hit, and when, before finally settling on Tihapu in Tahiti. However, shooting the scene proved to be challenging since enormous, surfable waves are rare and unpredictable. A set of crew first went to Jaws, a surf break in Maui, months before principal photography began on the film. The team had to wait several days in Tihapu for the waves to swell. Luckily, enormous swells arrived. The crew ran nine cameras in the water, on cliffs and on helicopters to capture the action in January 2014. Laird Hamilton, a pioneering big wave surfer, who also played a minor role in the film, contributed his skills to the shoot. Additionally, Ian Walsh, a surfer from Maui, Billy Kemper, Makua Rothman, and Ahani Tsundru, served as stunt doubles. Australian surfer Laurie Towner who was hired as the stunt double for lead character Johnny Utah, broke his jaw and suffered other wounds during stunt surfing in Tihapu for the film in mid-September 2014. Wingsuit Sequence The wingsuit flying sequence which is notably the most dangerous stunt in the film was filmed in Weilandstadt, Switzerland, and required five stuntmen flying in formation, while all weaved through narrow mountain passes, one of which is called the crack all, at a speed of over 145 miles per hour. The production cancelled planned flights on a number of days, because of poor weather conditions, eventually completing it only after two weeks in August 2014. Corps brought in Jeb Corliss, a professional skydiver, to help coordinate the scene, and hand-pick wingsuit athletes to perform the stunt. 
Corliss and his team pick the best wingsuit pilots in the world, who have all made over 17,000 skydives and have had 20 years of experience, including 1,000 base jumps and thousands of wingsuit jumps each, to perform the jump. Corliss himself was going to be one of the flyers, but was not able to be, because he was recovering from a knee surgery after he tore his anterior cruciate ligament prior to the filming. While testing a suit, the five flyers includes two times World Wingsuit League champion and four times Guinness World Records holder Jonathan Flores, Red Bull Air Force former manager John DeVore, who previously worked on the wingsuit sequence for Transformers, Dark of the Moon, and served as the aerial coordinator, Mike Swanson, Julian Boo, Noah Barnson, and James Boo. DeVore knew that the sequence was going to be difficult to enact, especially in super tight choreographed formations. Corliss himself was familiar with the place, since he made a jump in 2011 from a peak just outside the Swiss town. A video of the jump titled, Grinding the Crack, uploaded to YouTube has been watched over 30 million times. However, performing such a sequence proved to be very dangerous. If one person crashes with the other, it could lead to the disproportion of the flight pattern and subsequently could result in death. Due to this, safety became a top priority for Kaur. Prior to shooting, the stuntman went to the location, and to other locations which were similar, to start training in groups, in order to get comfortable with the wingtip to wingtip flights necessary to pull the scene off. The wingsuiters initially jumped from planes, racking up more than 500 jumps over the course of the year leading up to filming. They would fly in tight formations over and over again, simply as a way of getting accustomed to the idea of having someone nearby at all times. The production team also went to Switzerland 12 days prior to shooting to practice. During the shoot, there were ground-based cameras, with long lenses, and a helicopter with a gyro-stabilized camera as well. Since Core needed a series of shots to create the sequence, from point-of-view shots to profile shots of the wingsuiters cruising past the mountain, to close-ups unlike filming GoPro cameras one of the wingsuiters needed to wear a cinema-quality camera on his head, rather than a GoPro. The task went to Flores and Boo, who had never done camera work before. The red camera used in the flights weighed an astounding 15 pounds, enough to significantly alter the way pilots normally flew. The wingsuiters made over 60 jumps in the course of two weeks to get all the shots. Corliss called it the most dangerous stunt that has ever been filmed for a movie. Snowboarding Sequence For the snowboarding scene, which was shot in Aiguille de la Grande Sazia in France, professional snowboarders Xavier de la Rue and Jeremy Jones, along with Ralph Backstrom and Mike Bassey, were hired to play stunt doubles. There were daily avalanche checks during the shoot and a significant amount of time was spent sitting and waiting for the right conditions to film. For this scene, Kaur and members of his crew roped down cliffs to record the snowboarders from the best possible angles. At some point, Kaur had to give Xavier the camera and he had to shoot other people. He admitted that, because Rue and Jones were so fast, few could keep up with them. During filming a particular sequence, a Class 4 avalanche was triggered. Rock Climbing Sequence for the rock climbing sequence, the cast and crew traveled to Angel Falls in Venezuela, where they set up three camps. One base was below the falls, one was on the rim, and one was high on the Tepui. The film crew had to land on a small island, at the head of the Chorun River that had no vehicles, then move the equipment by motorized canoes to the falls by negotiating with a local general for a helicopter to get them and several tons of equipment out. Corps hired Lin Wynn a longtime Southern California climber, and former climbing consultant to a TV sports series, who Kaur described as his oldest friend, as the climbing unit supervisor. That site was near an overhanging 100-foot boulder that the longtime climber Rigger Dave Schultz had picked out during scouting, as an ideal site for close-up studio climbing shots. Filming also took place on the wall beside the waterfall. Chris Sharma served as a stunt double for Johnny Utah, whereas Teresa Palmer was filmed in a climbing scene separately in the Alps. Danny Andrada of Spain played the stunt double for Body, and climber filmmaker Mike Call was second unit cameraman. Peter Croft, a well-known Canadian climber and soloist, was hired as a backup climber and a stunt rigger, and to help lend credibility to the free soloing scenes. He and Wynne read the script together 
taking notes and suggesting changes in dialogue. Others in the unit were Schultz, Aaron Walters, Brooks and Al, Alexander Majel, and Ralph Heger of Germany, Emmeline Kolevsky of Bulgaria, and Alberto Roja and other climbers from Venezuela. For soloing shots, the climbers were tied into thin spectra line that could be digitized out. All bolts used in the filming were removed afterwards. Jumping sequences on several European jumping scenes, Kor, who also previously trained as a mountain ranger, would hike up with a small crew, and wait hours for safe conditions. Kosov said the movie, was more of an expedition than a production. Release The film was initially slated for an August 7, 2015 release, but on August 12, 2014, Warner Brothers brought the date forward to July 31, 2015. On February 3, 2015, the release date was moved back to December 25, 2015. Warner Brothers is distributing the film in the US, Canada, Australia, UK, Russia, Brazil, Japan, and Latin America, and Lionsgate and Summit Entertainment are distributing the film in other territories. DMG Entertainment which collaborated with Alcon Entertainment to finance and develop the remake, distributes the film in China, where it was released on December 4, 2015. Box Office Point Break has grossed $28.8 million in North America and $104.9 million in other territories, for a worldwide total of $133.7 million, against a budget of $105 million. In the United States and Canada, the film opened on the same day as Daddy's Home, Joy, and Concussion, and earned $4.1 million on its opening day. In its opening weekend, it earned $9.8 million from 2,910 theaters, finishing eighth at the box office, and last among new releases. Point Break was released across 3,700 screens in China, its first market, on December 4. Three weeks prior to its U.S. release, it earned $12.1 million in its opening weekend and $22.7 million in its first full week, fending off local newcomer Fall in Love Like a Star, but debuted behind The Martian, which was on its second weekend of play. Alcon Entertainment's Andrew Kosov said they were happy with the results given the lack of brand equity associated with the film there, including revenues from five other Asian markets. The total opening was $14.1 million, buoyed by good word of mouth. The film fell only 14% in its second weekend to $10.2 million, which is the lowest second weekend drop of any film in China of 2015. It was was finally overtaken by Chinese films Mojin, The Lost Legend and Surprise in its third weekend. As of December 2015, it has grossed a total of $39.4 million in China. In other markets worldwide, it opened with $1.8 million in Russia and the CIS, $1.6 million in France, $1.5 million in Australia. $1.5 million from 421 screens in Italy where it debuted at number 3 behind Universal's local film La Biomo Fata Grossa and Fox's The Revenant, and $1.3 million in Japan. In the United Kingdom and Ireland, it posted an opening weekend of just £421,818 from 364 screens debuted at third place among newly releases behind Goosebumps and Dad's Army, and in ninth place overall. In comparison, the original Point Break debuted with £777,000 from 273 screens back in November 1991, eventually reaching just over £4 million. Warner Brothers' portion of the total is $21.4 million in 11 markets while Lionsgate total is $74.5 million. Critical Reception on review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 9% based on 92 reviews and an average rating of 3. 7 tenths. The site's critical consensus reads, loaded with dazzling action, but bereft of purpose. The Point Break remake will be remembered as the first film to make audiences pine for the simultaneous presences of Keanu Reeves and Gary Busey. On Metacritic, the film holds a score of 34 out of 100 based on 21 reviews, indicating, generally unfavorable reviews. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of, B, on an A plus to F scale.
Maggie Lee of Variety called the film, a visual dazzler, and a dramatic non-starter. Elizabeth Kerr of The Hollywood Reporter called the film, a thrill ride in need of a few more thrills. Noel Murray of The Los Angeles Times remarked that, while Bigelow's version featured charismatic lead performances and ample pop, cause cast mumbles slowly and sparingly at one another until it's time to jump off something. The AV club's Ignacy Vishnevetsky said, boldly reimagining Catherine Bigelow's cult favorite as a movie where absolutely nobody seems to be having any fun. The new point break drops the original zen-like balance of macho mysticism and camp in favor of door humorlessness. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like